رسول الله رسول الله Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. I begin with the name of God. When learning about the Messenger of God, peace and blessings be upon him, and when talking about his married life, what's really important for us to also explore and understand is who was he married to? Because these are the remarkable, amazing individuals who were selected and chosen by God himself to be the companions, to be the wives of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. And they were chosen by the Divine himself to share their lives with him. When talking about the wives of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, there's also the same reason why they've been given such an amazing position within our religion, within our deen as well. They are referred to in the Quran as, or, or they are referred to in Islam as, as Wajun Mutaharat, the very pure, blessed wives of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. The Quran refers to them as Ummul Mu'mineen, Ummahatul Mu'mineen. They are the mothers of the believers. And so they've been given a great position of respect and regard. One particular wife of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, that I'd like to talk to you today about is Ramla bint Abi Sufyan, which means Ramla, the, wife, the daughter of Abu Sufyan. So her father was Abu Sufyan, the great leader of Quraysh, who for a very long time was very staunch in his opposition against the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him and against Islam, with, who later on during the conquest of Mecca ended up accepting Islam. So Ramla bint Abi Sufyan, she accepted Islam in the early days of Mecca. And she was married to a cousin of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, by the name of Abdul, uh, Ubaidullah bin Jahsh. So she herself accepted Islam. She was married also to someone who accepted Islam in the early days in Mecca. And when the opposition in Mecca became more serious, then at that point in time, husband and wife, they decided to leave Mecca and to immigrate to Abyssinia, where many Muslims were going and taking refuge and seeking refuge there. She, well, first of all, one blessed thing that happened with them, the young couple, the newly married couple, was that Ramla was pregnant. She was expecting, so she became pregnant. But then something very tragic occurred. And this was a test, this was a trial for her. Her husband, f some narrations actually mentioned that he became an alcoholic. Actually, it also mentions that he became very abusive, as what happens with alcoholism. He became very abusive, and he used to physically and emotionally abuse his wife, Ramla, the daughter of Abu Sufyan, and eventually he ended up dying because of that same condition. He gives birth to a child, which turns out to be a beautiful daughter by the name of Habiba. She names her Habiba. And from that moment on, this woman Ramla was known by the name of Ummu Habiba as the mother of Habiba because of that child that she gave birth to. Now she's living there in Abyssinia, a single mother who went through domestic violence, whose husband was an alcoholic, whose husband died, and she's a single parent raising a child alone. The Prophet, peace and blessings, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, got to know about this situation in Medina. He had gone to Medina by this time. He, and he heard that the daughter of Abu Sufyan, who is the leader of his people, is going through all this adversity and all this difficulty back over there in Abyssinia. And at that point in time, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent a marriage proposal for her. He sent the word through the king of that place, that time, Najashi, that he sent a marriage proposal that if she accepts, I will marry her and take care of her and her child. And she, when she got the proposal, of course, she accepted. She said, there's no better proposal that I could ever ask for. There she eventually joined the Prophet wasallam in Medina. And then, of course, they continued their married life there together. As a closing note, what I'd like to mention here at the very end is, you know, uh, this story really, really honestly is something that we need to be talking about a lot more and that we don't talk about enough. And I think it serves, it addresses a very, very relevant practical issue that we're dealing with across the board in any community, but particularly today in the Muslim community. This was a woman who was married and who had gone through domestic violence. And her husband, you know, had eventually died. And she's a single mother. She has a child as well. 
And there are many, many sisters, Muslim sisters in our community today, who might have gone through a difficult marriage. Does our community reflect and how does our community view those sisters today that who have gone through a bad marriage and ended up divorced or who have a child from a previous marriage? Unfortunately, the sad reality today is we consider them damaged goods. We consider them tainted. Nobody considers that a worthwhile marriage proposal. Nobody's interested in marrying these sisters. When the best human to ever walk the face of this earth, the most amazing of Allah's creation, peace and blessings be upon him, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did not think, he felt that Ummu Habiba was good enough for him to marry, and he himself proposes to her. He didn't see Ummu Habiba as damaged goods. He didn't see her to be not good enough for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Peace and blessings be upon him. So there's a very, by studying the life of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, we can uncover these gems and we can learn so many lessons and so many solutions to the practical everyday problems that our community is experiencing. I pray and I hope that Allah, that God makes this a means of benefit for both you and for me. And I hope and I pray that God accepts this effort from all of us, especially from the Celebrate Mercy team. And I want to really honestly not just thank, but I want to congratulate everybody who's here watching this broadcast today because you're spending this time in the best way possible, learning about the Beloved of Allah. Jazakumullah khairan. May, may God reward and bless all of you and myself included. And may Allah, may God accept from all of us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.